Looking for the best heavyweight portable speaker to buy? Let's put these six speakers to the test and find out which comes out on top. That's right guys, Louis and Elliot here. Another year has gone by and another portable speaker showdown for you all. But this time, we're going to be taking a look at some of the heavyweight options in this category. It's a bit of an emerging market within the speaker world right now. Mm -hmm. And with some really exciting new releases, it's getting more and more competitive year on year. Yeah. Now, before we do get into it, there is something that I want to make really, really clear. Although these are portable speakers, these haven't been designed to chuck in a rucksack and be taken with you everywhere. We see these as more of a, an around the home sort of speaker, moving from room to room and maybe out into the garden and things like that. Yeah, 100%. And obviously guys, this is meant to be a bit of fun and our opinions are only opinions. So no need to take it for gospel. We'd love it if you guys got involved though. So get a pen and paper ready and score along with us and let us know what you think down in the comments below. For some of you, based on how you're planning to use them, it might be that sound quality is your only or main priority. So you might want to weight that section accordingly to give you a better understanding of where these all sit in relation to your needs. So right there now, I think let's get straight into it and we'll meet this year's competitors. We've got six great speakers and a big difference in price across the board. So that's why we'll be scoring these out of 10 in four different categories. Yeah, that's right. We'll be scoring them based on their design, sound performance, portability and battery life and overall value for money to really level the playing field and find out which speaker is the best. Yeah, now obviously me and Elliot do have different preferences and we're looking for completely different things when it comes to a portable speaker like this. Definitely. Now, this seems like a great time to point you guys in the direction of our new master sheet of portable speaker scores. Yeah, so essentially this is going to be a live document that we add to over the next couple of months as we review new speakers. So not only is it going to include the portable speakers like we've got here, but also new products like wireless speakers, soundbars and all those kind of things. So first things first, let's talk design, because as I'm sure you're all aware, if you are looking for a speaker that's perfect for both taking on the go and sitting in your home, you're going to want it to look great, right? Yeah, I mean, design is a bit of a broad term. So just for clarity, this section is literally just going to focus on the looks and the build quality of each speaker. And we'll cover things like durability and the extra features they have a little later on. But that aside, which one's your favorite looks wise, Lou? I think my favorite for design does have to be the Sonos Move. I love the sleek, minimalist Sonos styling, and especially the combination of the metal grill, the rubber base on the bottom. I think it works really well. I think for me, mm. I'm looking for a good looking speaker, which this is, don't get me wrong, Yeah. but it's just a little bit too mainstream. Mm. I want that unique styling, something a bit different, and I don't know if the Sonos It's not doing it for you. It. No, just not. There's something about well, it. Let's score this out of 10 then. Okay. My favorite of the bunch. I'm yeah. going to give this a solid nine for me, but what about for you? It's a tough one. I don't want to peak too early. <laughs> I'm going to give it, I reckon, a seven. Seven for me. Fair Locked enough. In. I think for me, it's hard to look past the Marshall Middleton. I mean, you can't not love the Marshall style. It's really classic, rocky everything that I want from a portable speaker. Yeah, don't get me wrong, Al, I can really appreciate the design of the middle turn, the heritage and all that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. for me personally, it's just not to my taste. What are you going to give it out of 10? I mean, you set the bar with your favorite being a nine. And I to did. be honest, I'm going to follow suit, mate. Really? It's a nine. Oh, I can appreciate it, but it's just not to my taste. I'm going to give the middle turn a seven out of 10. So out of all of the portable speakers we've got here, one of the most interesting, most unique designs is the B&O A5. I think what's really hard to overlook is the materials that this thing's made from. We've got like mm -hmm. the handle here made of real oak, which is really nice. And yeah, there's no visible definitely. plastics either. Mm, yeah, it is heavy though, isn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't want to be dropping it. But for me, I'm actually a bit of a fan of it. Very classic B&O. It feels like it is fresh it's out of a magazine. It's Scandi vibe, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what they were going for. Yeah, it is a modular design. So yes. parts can be replaced. So you can replace the handle on this. The grill does come off. You can mm -hmm. swap that out if you'd like to, but obviously that will come at an expense. Mm -hmm. As I said, appreciate the build quality, the design of it, but it's just not to my personal taste. So out of 10, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give this one a seven. See, I think just because I'm a little bit more of a fan of it. Mm -hmm. It's an eight from me. Really? Yeah, I think so. <sighs> Strong. Just nabbed it. Strong. Right then, sticking with the premium theme. Sure. Let's talk about the DVLA Mania then. Yep. I prefer it to the A5. Yep. I prefer the spherical design, mm -hmm. cool carry handle. I love the visible woofers. Yeah. And to be honest, it is what I'm after. I want unique, and this is definitely that. Do you know what? I'm actually 
in somewhat of an agreement with you. Oh, makes to a me, first. <laughs> <laughs> now, for me, I don't think there's any denying that the build quality is fantastic, and that is obviously slightly reflected in the price tag. But uh, do you know what? I'm just going to jump straight in and give this a score out of 10, and I'm going to give it a solid 8. Oh, yeah. that's good from you. I like it that much. See, I was thinking an 8, but mm. just on the pure fact that I do prefer it a little bit more to the A5, yeah. it's an 8.5 for me. <sighs> All right, then now let's move over and talk about the X600 that we got right on the end over here. Yeah. Now, I actually quite like the design of it. It yeah. kind of reminded me a little bit of like the old school Roberts radios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper retro. Yeah, that sort of I'm thing. a bit of a fan of it. I'm in the same boat. I think as Soundcore speakers go, yeah. it's their best looking for by sure. far. As we've said, given the context for Soundcore, this is yeah. definitely a massive step up in terms of design yeah. versus their other products. It's the little touches, isn't it? So what are you giving it out of 10? <sighs> okay, well, again, it, within context of everything we've got here, I am a fan of it. It's not my favourite, but I think it's solid. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. But what about you? Yeah, I, I think you read my mind with that one. It's a 7 for me as well. Yeah. Can't really go wrong. Right then, Lou. Yeah. Let's finish up design then. What do you think of the JBL Extreme 3? Extreme 3. Do you know what? This one is very much more function over form. Now, it does yeah. come in a couple of different colours. We've obviously got the black version here. You can get it in a camo version, I believe, and also a blue colourway, which yeah. is also quite nice. Now, don't get me wrong. I have been a big fan of the JBL speakers as portable speakers, mm -hmm. but obviously we're looking at something that we're going to have in and around the house as well. Yeah. And the design of the Extreme 3 just isn't something that I can see sitting on my kitchen side or in the living room or anything yeah. like that. I'm, I'm glad you said it, to be honest. It's a rugged design, but it's not a home speaker, is it? No. And I think this is the thing with this review. We've got to put it into the context of this being a portable speaker that's within the home environment as well. Yeah, so definitely. for that reason and that reason alone, this is going to be one of the ones that I score a lot lower in comparison out of the others. I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. Yeah, I think I agree with you. It, it's hard. I feel a bit guilty, but yeah. it's a 6 from me too. So there we have it. That just about wraps up our design section. Yeah. Now, I think it's really important to mention, guys, before we move on, that this is, of course, all personal preference. What I prefer is different to what Elliot prefers, which is yeah. no doubt going to be different to what you guys prefer. But obviously, keep us updated in the comments below, which is your favourite out of the ones that we've got here. So before me and Elliot get into discussing how these speakers sound, we figured we'd give you guys a sound test to listen to first. Now, as always, our usual disclaimer that what you hear over YouTube is not going to be exactly what we're hearing right here in the studio, but it should give you guys some idea as to how these different speakers sound. Now for context, we are going to be quite critical about this. So for us, an average speaker is a five, which would be okay. Now to give something a 10 for us is something that we are happy to say that we don't think it will be beaten for a long time. And we'd be shocked if it was beaten by something anytime soon. A nine is something that we think is a high level performance speaker that we are very impressed with and currently think is at the top of the game right now. I mean, obviously sound is always a really tough one to score. So don't forget, this is all subjective to what we personally think okay then Lou mm -hmm. what are you thinking then a5 sound quality well do you know what what really impressed me straight away when I listened to this for the first time was the 360 degree sound yeah. I thought it was really really impressive it's musical it's dynamic and it handles all of the genres that we tried it with really really yeah. well I was in the same boat enjoyed all of those features I mm. think the highs were impressive the mid-range was great yeah but for me the bass was the standout feature yeah no it it's not rumbling your chest bass is it no it's not but it's not it's really clean, tight, and everything you want from a portable speaker like that. I think. It is, definitely. I think one thing that is important to mention is that we did notice on certain tracks when the bass and the volume was cranked right up, the bass did clip ever so slightly. Yeah. I yeah. think that's my only kind of like pet peeve with this one. But yeah. 
Again, I'm trying to put it into context of the price. It's a 900 pound portable speaker. Now, it might not be 900 pounds worth of sound to everybody, mm. but I think out of all the speakers we've got here, for me, this is personally my favorite. And I think it is very, very impressive. I think we just need to score it. Yeah, I think we do. What are you going to give it out of 10? It's tough. I know we said at the start, 10 has to be the best of the best. Yeah. And I don't think it's quite there, mm -hmm. but it is close. So I'm going to give it a nine. And I'm going to go right with you. I agree. For all the same reasons, solid nine out of 10 for yeah. me. Definitely. Right then, let's move over and talk about the DVLA Mania for sound quality. What are you thinking, Al? See, I really like this one as well. Mm -hmm. For its form factor, yeah. the sound is massive and mm. it's really enjoyable to listen to. It's fun, it handles every genre really well, and I don't think you can really complain about it. No. I love the bass. It's so impressive how low this one can go, especially considering its size. I think what I noticed from it was it was very warm and bright without being too harsh. It had great clarity. There was really good separation, which was something that we both noticed when we listened mm. to it for the first time. And it does feel like every layer within all the tracks that we tried does have its own sort of space to breathe, which I thought yeah. was, was really cool. Now, it truly offers 360 degree sound. It's mm. balanced, the vocals sound really good. And like you've mentioned now, given the form factor, the sound out of this is extremely impressive. But for me, I just don't quite prefer the sound signature out of the Mania as much as I do out of the A5. Really? Yeah. See, I'm, I'm in Are a different boat. I'm not the other way. I think they're, quite, they're on a par for me. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, it might be because I enjoy that sort of bass heavy yeah, true. listening experience, true. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for me, I think it's a nine as well. I can't you split give it a nine. Yeah, I can't split them. <sighs> Just purely based on that sound signature alone, I am going to score this one slightly lower than the A5. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Right then, Lou. What yeah. about the Sonos Move then? Yeah, so my favourite design-wise and also one that I am a big fan of in mm -hmm. terms of the sound. Now, obviously being a Sonos speaker, we've listened to so many over the years. We are very accustomed to that sound yeah. signature. It's very balanced. It offers a nice smooth sound and it's brilliant with all different audio types. So I think one thing that I am quite impressed with out of the Move especially is the deep rich bass and it is a great all-rounder yes it's a natural step down from something like the mania or the a5 yeah. but for the price i don't think you can argue with it it's just one of those like you know what you're getting with this product mm -hmm. um it's not the best sounding i don't think personally out of the whole lineup mm -hmm. but it's just a really well-rounded speaker yeah so for that reason i'm going to jump straight in with a score here i'm going to go for a i'm going to go for a seven and a half yeah I, I think i'm with you on that one yeah the context is important when you put it in the Grand scheme of things, so yeah. yeah, seven and a half, I think that's fair. Nice. Okay, let's move over then. We'll talk about the Marshall Middleton for sound. Now, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit unsure of this one, I'll be honest with you, Al. Really? Yeah, it's an enjoyable listen for me personally, but I don't think it's as detailed as the others we've got in the lineup for that more sort of serious listening experience. Mm -hmm. I think it offers the sort of the type of audio experience that you'd expect from a, a portable. It's very lively and enjoyable, but Given the context and what we're wanting to use these speakers for, being in and around the home as well, I just don't think it quite competes with others that we've got. But what are you thinking about? I program? really enjoy listening to it. The sound stage is massive as well, especially mm -hmm. considering the form factor. And to be honest, I think it is a great option for those outside spaces. And if you're like me and love the style already, yeah. you can see it fitting into that. I think oh, it's, it's tough because it offers a very, it's like a signature martial sound. Yeah. But it's just not my preference. Yeah, it's just not definitely. something that I enjoy. So it's tough because I feel bad scoring it when I'm about to score it. But oh out God. of 10, I'll brace myself. I'm going to give it a six. Oh, Lou, really? I am. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. heavy. For me, it's, <laughs> it's a seven. I, again, it's not up there with the premiums in this lineup in mm -hmm. terms of sound quality. Yeah. But I enjoy it. It's what I want. So yeah, yeah, seven for me. That's fair enough. Right then, moving on to something a little bit different. Mm. Let's talk about the Soundcore Motion X600. Now, yep. it's pretty expansive. I it think is. it fills the room in a different way to the rest of these speakers with mm -hmm. that spatial audio mode, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, but what do you think about it? Yeah, so, well, like you've just touched on, I think when you use features like the bass up, you turn that on, you turn on what, it, well, what they call spatial audio that activates the top speaker, it does offer a pretty impressive sound quality for the, mm -hmm. especially like for the context, like given yeah. its form factor and given the price tag. It definitely is not going to be like a, a unique listening experience. Mm -hmm. It's not going to offer that intimate kind of level of listening. Yeah. But for a speaker that's just in and around the house, taken outside onto the patio or barbecue, I don't think you can really go too far wrong. It's no. just hard, like given what it's up against. But definitely. 
Having said all that, do you know what? Out of 10, six and a half I'm gonna go for, I think. Yeah, that was what I was thinking, to be fair. I think that's about right. Yeah, I think 6.5. Yeah. Decent. Finally, yeah. let's head over to the JBL Extreme Free and talk about this one for Sam. Now, mm -hmm. I honestly think out of the lineup, this is like the it's like the party speaker yeah. of the speakers that we've got here. And we all know you love a party. Guilty. Now, I honestly think that this speaker here is it's really fun to listen to. It's an enjoyable mm -hmm. listening experience. Yeah. Obviously, it does go very loud. And do you know, I actually think it goes a little bit louder than I think it goes louder than the Middleton, to be honest. Yeah, I'll give you that one, but I don't think the detailing is quite as good, which mm. is what I prefer with this one. But is that what it's trying to do? It well, goes loud and it does it, it well. Yeah, exactly. I think the bass is quite nice. We've listened to a couple of different genres. Again, not going to offer anywhere near the same level of like intimate listening experiences. You're not going to pick up any real nuances through, mm. through this speaker. But don't get me wrong, I do think it's probably a better balance for that indoor and outdoor listening than say something like a JBL Boombox 2 yes, or something like that. Yes, exactly. But yeah, I do agree. It's not that home speaker intimate listening experience no. as well as portability. Definitely so not. it's a tough one to judge. But it is. what do you think it sound is. quality wise then? Well, do you know what? Honestly, oh, I'm going to go for a, a six, I think. Six out of 10. Yeah. Six With it me on is. that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So we've spoken a lot about how these fit into the home, but what about their functionality is out and out portables? I mean, they are portable speakers after all, right? Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. And to be honest, I think the whole reason that this category is so unique is because they should be able to do it all. Yeah. And to be honest, when it comes to portability, I think you're gonna struggle to beat the Middleton here. I don't think you're wrong there. If we take a look at some of the facts, it's IP67 rated, and also it's got a 20 hour battery life, which correct me if I'm wrong, I think is the most out of all the ones that we've got no, here. No, yeah, I think you're right. And obviously it looks durable, it feels durable. It's passed all of our durability tests. It's one of the better options, definitely, for people who are planning on taking this, like you are, like to Airbnbs, chucking it yeah. in the car, heading out and about with it. I think out of all of them, it is probably one of the better options. Now, something else I quite liked, Al, was the fact that it's a four and a half hour recharge time, which was around about right an hour testing, but something that was really nice mm -hmm. was the quick charge feature. So 20 minutes of charging gives you two hours. When it comes to portability, I'm ranking this one 9.5 out of 10. Are you? Yeah. <sighs> Do you know what? I think for me as well, I think that's a fair, fair score. I'll yeah. go for nine and a half as well. So spec wise, we're looking at an IP67 rating on the Extreme 3, which means it's perfect for all environments. Now we have got that carry strap as well, which is a really nice little touch for easy traveling. And yeah. it has got that bottle opener on the strap as well. I think it does feel like the most rugged out of the bunch. It's close with the middle turn, but I do feel like personally the JBL kind of takes it there. In terms of playback, yeah. it says 15 hours. I know when we tested it, we got more than that. We did. So yes. it does push the Middleton close in that department. Mm -hmm. And it sort of just proves that this speaker is for more than the home, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. This thing out of all of them, I would say has probably been designed to be taken out and about yes. more so than, than any of the speakers in the lineup. So when we're thinking about durability, portability, battery life, again, scoring this thing out of 10, I don't know about you, Al, but I'm gonna go for a nine for the Extreme 3. Yeah, I'm in the same boat, I think, Although it's great for portability, it's hard to argue when you've got the actual spec list in front of you, isn't it? So yeah. because there is a little step down from the Middleton, mm -hmm. it's getting a nine from me as well. Yeah. Moving on to the DBLA mania yeah. then. So battery life, mm -hmm. it's actually the worst of the bunch with only 10 hours playback. <sighs> it's also only IPX4 rated. This is where these other speakers, like these higher end ones, start to lose some marks yes. in comparison to these other speakers here, like the Extreme mm -hmm. 3, like the Middle Turn, and like the Soundcore. So I think looking at the form factor of the Mania, it is a lot smaller than some of the other speakers here. So it is easier to transport, but again, because of its durability ratings, you don't really want to be doing that too mm. much. Yeah. Now the handle does look cool, but one thing that I found is just not practical to try and like, pick, yeah. like you literally just it's have to so put finger it? under it and kind of pick it up. It's, it's a little bit awkward. Yeah. A it's not bit light clunky. either, is it? No, it is quite weighty for its size. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, I think it's quite a nice feature that it comes with a charging dock, but that mm. is a separate accessory that you have to buy, which yeah. I think is another sort of 69 pounds or so. Yeah. So again, <laughs> trying to score this thing out of 10, Mm -hmm. The durability ratings are what really score this down for me because they're just yeah. not anywhere near as good as some of the other speakers here. So, I don't know, six and a half, I think. 
Yeah, I, I was torn six, six and a half, but I think six and a half is probably right. Yeah. So moving on then to talk about the A5 and similar to mm -hmm. the Mania, these premium portable speakers durability wise are not going to live up to the other ones as we've already mentioned. Now, if we start by talking about the materials on this thing, this speaker is just not going to withstand being dropped from any real height, I don't no, think. 100%. Literally feels like it's going to smash into smithereens. Yeah, IP65 rated on this one. So again, not the best, but by no means the worst. Well, could do a job speakers. like poolside, beachside, that yeah, sort of thing. Absolutely. You do get 12 hours battery life, which mm. is about standard for these types of speakers. Yeah. And to be honest, I think you're going to be leaving this one plugged in around the home more often than not, especially with that lush cable that you've got <laughs> yeah. in the box. I think the other thing that is worth mentioning is in the app. So it actually shows you the battery percentage and actual time left, which is pretty cool. And it's a nice little bit of attention to detail there. Yeah, definitely. So, Al, with all those things considered, what are you going to give this out of 10? For me, it's tough, but I'm going to give it a seven and a half. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm in agreement with you yeah. there. Right then. So we're going to move on and talk about the X600. And again, let's start with the IP rating. So IPX7 mm -hmm. rated. One thing I did notice, though, from a durability point of view, is we did a couple of drop tests and it did scuff up quite quickly and quite easily, given mm. the materials that it's made from. <laughs> Moving on to other things like battery life, 12 hours. So pretty, pretty standard. standard, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah. For me, it feels like you can chuck it into a bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'd you really wanted to, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I can see it in my Airbnb yeah. trips yep. rather than some of them, which yep. is a good thing for me. Yep. I mean, the standout feature has got to be the three hour recharge time from 0% yep. to 100. Can't go wrong. No, definitely can you? not. No. Um, but yeah, in terms of ranking, I'm not really sure where to put it. How about you? Um, I think out of 10, I'm going to give this one a solid seven, I think. I think I'm going to give it a little bit more than You're gonna that. going to go higher? Yeah, I reckon for me it's an eight. Yeah? Yeah. So finally, let's move on and talk about the Sonos Move. Now this is IP56 rated. In terms of durability, we've obviously got the metal grill and the rubber base at the bottom, which I am actually a big fan of, but I have found that dropping this from any real height, it does pick up some nicks and some scratches, especially with the white version that we've got here. But I have got to say, I think I'd rather drop that than like, the premiums, for example. Yeah, you'd way rather have that hit the floor than the A5 yeah, or the main. Yeah. A million percent. I think another thing to mention as well is you do get 11 hours playback mm -hmm. with this one, which again is standard for these sort of portables, but you do get a lush charging stand in yeah. the box as well. So it makes it really easy to have that hub in the house. And then if you want to take it out into the yeah. garden, you can, which is nice. Exactly. And the other thing to mention is because you've got the USB-C port on the back here as well, yeah. you can use that as the charging feature yeah. rather than the stand. So it does make it a little bit easier in terms of like the functionality and then Definitely. also the port taking it from room to room and, and charging that way. You've got options, haven't you? You have. Out of 10, I'm gonna go for a seven. Yeah, it's a good little all-rounder, isn't it? And yeah. I think, to be honest, seven's about right. So moving on to our final section, I think there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to ranking these speakers. And I think when you really break it down, it's clear that they all have their own strengths and their own weaknesses. But there's no doubt that for a lot of us, one of the major barriers that we have to think about is of course our budget, right? Yeah, of course. Now, it's all well and good us saying that a 900 pound speaker sounds the best, but sometimes getting real bang for your buck is just as important. So that's why we think it's only fair that, that we also judge these on their value for money too. Exactly. Now, we're also going to go over all of the features that make each of these speakers unique in this section as well to really try and nail down the best pound for pound purchase that you can make. Do you know what? There's only one place that we should start. The yeah. Soundcore X600. I think for £199, when you take everything into consideration, the Soundcore mm -hmm. X600 definitely offers the best level of value for money. Now, it might not be the best out of these speakers for anything in particular, but it is really impressive mm -hmm. in our testing. Yeah, 100%. You read my mind. I think for the right person, this is going to be absolutely perfect. Yeah. It's got Bluetooth 5.3, which is great with a 10 meter range. Mm -hmm. We've tested that and it went further than that. We got yep. around like 30 to 35 meters, yep. which is brilliant. Yeah. And also you've got aux line in at the back if you fancy doing that instead. There's a mic in it, obviously for mm -hmm. calls. There's no voice assistant, but we have got the uh, ability to pair this to another Soundcore speaker so we can combine multiple for stereo mode. Mm -hmm. And we've also got a number of different presets and EQ adjustments in the app, which is pretty standard now for most of these portables, mm. but it's still nice to have, and especially yeah. given the price point, definitely that speaker. And, so. and the app definitely enhanced performance, didn't it? Yeah, for sure. Which is a, which is what you want for sure. It? So I think let's score these out of ten then. Yeah. For the X six hundred, it's got to be high, hasn't it? It has to be. This Value is for money, the one. It's the cheapest out of the lineup. Yeah. A load of great features. I'm giving it a nine. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'm with you on that. Yeah. I think I am. Yeah. Solid. Nine right. out of ten. We're in. So moving on then, let's talk about the Middleton. Now, a couple mm -hmm. of things I wanted to mention here. It is somewhat expensive, £269. I do feel, and this might be me being a little bit harsh, mm -hmm. but I do feel like you might be paying a little bit of a premium for that Marshall branding. I might yeah. be wrong there. No, I, I think in I the know. context of Marshall speakers, it is an expensive one. Yeah. I do I do get where you're coming from. Yeah. That. Um but Thinking further afield, we've obviously got the Marshall app. Again, can't mm -hmm. really go into too much detail in terms of control on the app, but it still offers a nice little bit of functionality, mm -hmm. which is quite cool. But without the mic, that obviously means we've got no voice control or access to Spotify Connect and yeah. like those kind of things. Mm -hmm. A little feature I do like though, is it can be used as a power bank, which is it always can. ideal. It is, it's useful, but it is a feature that will of course drain the battery as well, which is something yeah. to take into consideration. Yeah, definitely. We've obviously got the adjustable bass and treble controls, which you can do without having to go to the app, which is great. Yeah. Especially if you're sat at a barbecue and you don't want to get your phone out, something yeah. like that. It's also got Bluetooth 5.1. Yeah. So they state you get 10 meters. Mm -hmm. I know we got a lot more than that, didn't we? Obviously, multi-point connection as well, so you can have two phones connected, yeah. which is great. Again, party atmosphere, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And there's an aux line in as yeah, well. Yeah, also got the aux line in. So yeah. I think it ticks a lot of boxes. It does. Also, there's that visible battery life indicator and volume indicator, which is so underrated in my opinion love having that on top mm -hmm. and obviously in the app i know you said it's pretty basic but there's also marshall stack mode as there well. is yeah so all things considered then now yeah. out of 10 what are you giving this i mean it's one of those it's not the best no definitely not the worst i think it's a seven for me yeah do you know what i want to give it a seven out of ten yeah. as well all right then sticking with the more traditional portables mm -hmm. what about the extreme three then yeah i mean it does cost £299.99 yes. RRP. There's just not enough to warrant it being a home speaker as well as a portable. So when you're thinking about it in the terms of value for money, does yeah. it really tick those No, boxes? I'm definitely going to have to score it down on that, uh, yeah. that sense. But definitely. let's take a look at the specs in a little bit more detail. So Bluetooth 5.1, uh, you can connect two phones to it on Bluetooth, which is yeah. nice. You've obviously got the party boost feature, like a lot of JBL speakers feature, so you can connect multiple mm -hmm. uh, if you really want to ramp the volume up, which is quite a nice feature to yeah. have, to be fair. And the other thing that I think is worth mentioning is, of course, like a lot of these speakers, we've got the JBL app. Again, mm -hmm. not a great deal of customization available, but it is nice to have that yeah. extra feature. It does work well enough, and you can make a couple of tweaks, which is nice. Yeah. What are you ranking out of 10? Well, I think the really important point to mention here is that I just... It's, it's use case, right? Yeah. And it's that value for money which is really scoring this thing down for me. Although the features are nice, yeah. they're not standout, and that use case scenario, six and a half. Yeah. Again, I think it's as with all of these, context is so important. Mm. And like you said, it just doesn't fit the use case that either of us are looking no. for. So I'm going to give this a seven. So moving on then now, let's take a look at the A5. And there is one feature yes. in particular I really want to talk about. Mm -hmm. It's that Qi charging capability. Yes. Putting your phone on top, and it charges. Yeah, I love That's it. That's a cool feature. Yeah. I really like how this one does it wirelessly. I think it's mm -hmm. really cool. Now, obviously, it does drain the battery life, and it's not great out and about with this one, but if you have got it plugged in around the home, then it is a great addition. And to be fair, I do wish more speakers had this feature. Uh, the app itself mm -hmm. is pretty good. It's not the best of the bunch, no. but it's a worthy companion app, yeah, yeah. considering the standard of the speaker as well. Yep. There's obviously the EQ adjustments, room compensation, which is a great feature to have. Mm -hmm. You can also stereo pair to of these that is a cool feature yep but, but what's the price on that 1800 quid yeah 1800 quid. i think and is that that's if you go for the um cheaper version so yeah. if you're going for the dark oak version yeah two of these yeah two grand yeah it's a lot of money it's a lot it's so, out of my price range put it that way <laughs> yeah yeah i agree yeah um other things we've got so we've got wi-fi 6 so that comes with all the usual sort of features, Bluetooth 5.2, but there is no voice control, which mm -hmm. does sort of score this down slightly. This is definitely much more of a speaker that I can see sitting in and around my home, taking out yep. the garden than I can with something like the Extreme 3. But again, we're thinking value for money. This is the most expensive speaker in the lineup. Yes. And I think like part of that price tag as well is like this modular design, which is something that's quite new within these speakers. Mm. It's the only one out of this lineup that really offers that. Yeah. But again, kind of like the branding on the Marshall, I do feel like maybe you are paying a bit of a premium for that sort of functionality, that modular design. And do I want to be paying extra for all of that? Am I going to be making use of it? How much more is an expensive oak handle going to cost me to replace? Yeah, exactly. So overall, I think out of 10, what are you going to give this one, mate? It's tough, but I think for me, it's got to be a seven. All things considered, I'm actually going to go for 6.5. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I can see why you've done it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the DVLA mania then. Mm -hmm. So... 
obviously great audio, yeah. but it does fall short in terms of those extra features that we've seen throughout yeah. the rest of the range. There's no something like spatial audio, there's not ch yeah. charging, mm -hmm. things like that. It's not a charging base. Yeah, that you get free. Yeah, <laughs> You've got exactly. to pay for it. Yeah, exactly. And to be honest, for a nearly 700 pound speaker, mm. I was expecting a little bit more. Yeah. Um, obviously there's Wi-Fi connectivity, yep. BT 5.0, yep. which is decent, yep. but again, not the best. No. What are you thinking? Well, you have got other things like your voice assistant, so Amazon Alexa only, but it is pretty good to have. Mm -hmm. But I agree with everything you said, like it's definitely not the most feature packed, not by a no. long way. And again, we're thinking value for money. I think there really is a case here to be argued for you're just paying for that premium sort of build quality, aren't you yeah. really? Like that's where the price is sort of going. And finally, when we take a look at the app, it's nice and sleek, it's pretty yeah. intuitive, it's easy to use, but it's pretty basic as well. Yeah. Um, and so when you're thinking like actual value for money, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of thinking again with like the A5, looks cool, it's premium, it sounds great, but I just don't think like you're getting a, a lot for your money with this speaker. Yeah. Definitely, I'm in the same boat, and for me, I'm giving it a six. Yeah, I'm in agreement. Six out of 10 for me as well. And finally, Al, let's talk about the one right in the middle, the yeah. Sonos Move. Now, a couple of things. First of all, you have got the cool charging base, which yeah. is obviously included in the price tag, unlike the DVLA Mania. Uh, voice enabled, so obviously we've got Alexa, Google Assistant, all mm -hmm. those sorts of things, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity as well. And also you've got Auto True Play, which yeah. is quite a nice feature to have. Great little feature. A um, couple of things, you can't see the battery percentage without the app which mm -hmm. is a little bit annoying. But then when we talk about the app, you can't really argue with it. The S2 especially, no. that functionality is really extensive. You've got multi-room capabilities, yeah. which is nice to have. And it is class leading for a reason. And you've also got that sound swap feature as well. So if you've got yeah. other Sonos speakers throughout the house like I do, you can simply hold the play and pause button and then it will pick up the different music that's playing from around yeah. your home, which is a really cool feature. And I definitely make use of that all of the time. But if you don't have Sonos at home, yeah. There's no real point in it. Do you no, know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, valid. And that's the only real area I can mark it down. Mm -hmm. It works great in terms of value for money. It's not as expensive as the premium options, but no. it still sounds brilliant. It can't charge your phone, which is another little no, drawback yeah. for me, which, sure. you know, when you're comparing it to these, you do have to think mm -hmm. about. But in terms of overall score, yeah. having thought about it, yeah. I'm going to give it an eight, personally. Yeah, I think that's fair. Do you know what? I'm going to go one higher. Okay. I'm going to give it a nine, but that is because I do have Sonos throughout the house. And yeah. so a lot of the functionality and the features, I'm really going to make use of with yeah. this. And I think when you put it into the context of the price, in comparison to the others, it's somewhere near that kind of middle ground. Yeah. And I think you are getting a lot for your money with this one. Definitely. Right, I think it's time that we worked out the scores then. So should we start with yours, Al? Yeah, so for me, in sixth place, I've got the JBL Extreme 3. Fifth, I've got the Sonos Move. Then it's the DVLA Mania. Third place is a Soundcore. Second is a Bio Sound A5. And the Marshall Middleton just takes it for me. What about you then, Lou? Yeah, so if I flash up my scores now, last place for me was the Extreme 3. Next was the DVLA Mania. And then joint third was the Marshall Middleton and the Soundcore X600. Second was the Bio Sound A5. And then winning it for me was the Sonos Move, which to be fair, does sound about right. Yeah. I mean, although we've got different orders, I think the biggest thing to take from this whole video yeah. is just how close it turned out to be. 100%. Now, I don't think you're necessarily gonna be losing out with any of these. They're all great speakers, and I think that's the beauty of this sort of thing. It all just comes down to your own personal preference and, of course, your specific use case. Yeah. It's all about figuring out your non-negotiables and picking and choosing where you'd be happy to make the sacrifices. Now, obviously this video is just a guide. So we've gone for a pretty rounded view on how these rank because we think as portables, they've got to sound great, look good, and move around your space easily, as well as offering great value. But for a bit of fun though, should we take a look at the overall combined winner? Yeah. Why not? By the looks of things, we've got a tie. So the joint winners with a score of 62 are the Sonos Move and the Marshall Middleton, closely followed by the B&O Biosound A5. So like we said at the start, guys, we hope that you scored along with us throughout the video. And of course, we want to know how you guys got on as well. So make sure you let us know down in the comments below. Now, if you want to see more content like this, then make sure you subscribe by see down there too. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll catch you all in the next one.